Okay. Um, in the previous session, we have discussed media literacy in terms of social networking. We talked about social media, time you spent on social media, and mm -hmm. other aspects of social media. And some of us shared that they have problems with controlling the media, they have media addiction. So today we'll take a look at advantages and disadvantages posed by social networks. So we have already defined the term social media. So uh, what was social media again? Social media, it's uh, social media. It is a media that has become so popular in Uzbekistan in the world. Uh, we can say such as Instagram, Facebook, we can say they are social media. Okay, thank you. So we define social media as um, popular type of media that is usually used on a wide scale that allows people to do multiple, um, let's say, functions at the same time. So social media is a very popular thing and social media has its own pros and cons. And our today's session will be devoted to this. We will be talking about advantages and disadvantages posed by social media. So today we'll talk about pros of social media, cons of social media. We'll try to summarize the points and to see if it's worth spending time on. And of course, we'll have some minutes spent on English improvement for media literacy purposes. Now, well, as an introduction, let's quite quickly get through the question of if social media is a good thing or a bad thing. I mean, good and bad is too general. Of course, it, it can have both sides, but overall, does it have more benefits or does it have more drawbacks? So this question is very much open to interpretation and people depending on their backgrounds, on their um, the type of user they are. We have talked about the types of users, right? In the previous session. If you remember, we talked about producers, consumers, so um, content designers, types of users that we can have. We had commenters, people who usually participate in social networking and social media to comment. So depending on many factors, social media can be beneficial or it can have its drawbacks. Um, again, it depends on the situation and the purpose of use. So let's take a look at what are the post benefits and what are the drawbacks. So first of all, the biggest advantages are for sure, a worldwide connectivity. So before social networking, the nations, communities were isolated. They did not really have, let's say common floor for communication. So in the last session also, we mentioned that the main goal of social media is communication. So as to serve this purpose, social media helps connect people on a global scale. So today sitting in the comfort of your home, you can access any person, uh, any community throughout the world, if there is internet connection, right? So there is worldwide connectivity. It happens in one click, in one click, you can connect with any person at any given time in any corner of the world. And of course, real-time information sharing. So you share information, you share information, you react to this information, it's very quick and it's real time. Advertisements. So one of the strongest sides of social media, it's full of advertisements and it brings lots of benefits to those, um, let's say producers of advertisements. Now we'll take a detailed look at every advantage that social media has. So worldwide connectivity, as we have talked about it. So social networking sites helps us to make new friends. I'm sure that all of us have um, made friends online. It can be through online gaming, can be social networking sites, can be through Facebook groups. 
and etc. And also, it helps to connect with new businesses or partners, especially LinkedIn, a professional social network. And also you can extend your personal base. Well, there are some social networking websites that is dedicated to allowing people connect and interact on a variety of platforms. And this connection can help to carry out many functions such as most people tend to find their romance or their love or their partners on social networks presently. If you're seeking a job, you can find one through social networking. You can directly find a person who is in the position of giving you an employment or you can come across advertisements or you can uh, follow the groups of companies and get to know if they have vacancies. And also, if you have products to offer, social networking is a good place to do your marketing. Well, sometimes people feel like they do not have support in their community. In this case, you can receive support from like-minded individuals. So you can find people who exactly think like you, who have the worldview that matches yours, um, which is a great aspect. Well, if you would like to receive an advice or personal counseling, again, social networking can be the floor. So nowadays it's not uncommon to have psychologists, therapists have their own pages on social networks. You can connect, you can share your problems, get some counseling, get some advice. So social networking has such huge benefit of connecting people businesses, organizations together. So continuing the same benefit, it's the place of exchange for news. And of course, you can get updated on friends and family. Those of us who have been to abroad, you cannot imagine connection with your friends and family back home without social networking. Thanks to social networking, uh, we have a chance to keep in touch and to keep updated on news regarding our family, to share videos, images in real time, and to stay connected. Needless to say, sometimes it can have its own drawbacks, but still, it's a very good tool for connectivity. Well, also, if you have friends, busy on some work trip or living in another country, again, you can virtually meet your friend at any given time. So connection is probably the biggest advantage social networking can impose. Number two, real-time information sharing. So through chatting, you can spread any information to any individual or to any group of individuals very quickly. Also, internet is like a huge textbook. So you can find answers to any questions. You just say, okay, Google, and go on with your question. And the answer that you have been searching for ages pops up in a matter of seconds, which is a very powerful information sharing, yes? and. Social networking can provide a tool for professionals as well. They can utilize meetings, they can organize conferences just like we are doing through Zoom right now, and they can get updates and also they can interact with their clients through chat boxes. Well, sometimes as a client, I feel inhibited to call a company if there is a problem, for example, a bank, or a delivery company. For me, it's more comfortable to write in their chat box. And I realize that they quickly reply, which is a good way of information sharing. So it's real time, quick, and let's say um, information sharing platform. Well, of course, advertisement. Why are we stressing out advertisement? It has the biggest, economical advantage 
in social media. Basically, social media networks exist because they get paid by producers of advertisements. So social network is the place where you can spread your advertisement for free or for payment if you want it to be, let's say, uh, at the top of the advertisements. Also, you can find products, you can find professional groups, services that you are searching for. Um, most of the websites such as Facebook has range of services designed to help businesses carry out marketing more easily. Well, you can find a company, you can visit their profile, and you can get effective feedback from other clients. So social media is already taking its place on business world as well. Now, before I turn into these advantages of social media, I would like to hear from you guys. Do you know any other benefits of social media other than we have discussed or I have mentioned right now? Do you have in mind any other advantages or pros of social media other than connection, information sharing, and advertisement? So what can you come up with? You can directly reply, you can type in the chat, allow yourself some time. So people do use social media because it has benefits. So what are the other benefits other than what I have just mentioned? Nothing is coming to your minds. Okay, so whenever you come up with ideas, you can leave a message on our chat box. Now let's turn to the disadvantages of social media. Okay, we are getting some replies. We can learn something new. For example, language, very good. Social networking is already used as a trend in ESL classrooms, teaching English as a second language. So that's a very good suggestion. Thank you, Nazima. So now these advantages of social media. Well, social media, despite having lots of positive affordances and positive, let's say, beneficial sides, it has also its downside, its disadvantages or cons. First of all, cyberbullying is the issue with social media. There is high risk of fraud and identity theft, privacy issues, and other disadvantages that we will be mentioning during this uh, part of the presentation. So first of all, social media can be a floor for bullying, cyberbullying. So what is cyberbullying? The concept of bullying is nothing new. We have been experiencing it starting from school years and then even in adult life. So especially young adults tend to experience bullying a lot, but cyberbullying is a bit different form of bullying. So there can be a person or a community that's constantly bullied through online accounts. Well, social networking sites allow people being bullied on, on a different level. So people can be harassed. They can get harassment or inappropriate contact from others. And people who cannot really speak up like this in real world can allow themselves to bully other people online. So if you go to any post of a popular page, um, let's take Kun Uz in Uzbek, um, let's say, Uzbek platform of Facebook. You can just visit any post and under it, you can see hundreds of comments. And most of those comments, sometimes they can have hateful viewing. They can bully people. So if there is, a, I remember a clear post. So there was a post about a woman living in the US, graduating from Harvard, not having a family and successfully carrying out her career. So when I read the comments by commentators, I, I saw lots of uh, examples of bullying. 
So they kept bullying her saying, oh, really? So she doesn't have a family. Then why does she need this uh, career? And they were even harassing words. So those people who cannot really say those things face to face to the person feel more brave when they comment on social platforms. That's why cyberbullying is sometimes even more severe than real life bullying. Especially people with fake accounts tend to bully other people. Sometimes young people do it on purpose in order to bully some people they know, for example, a classmate or a, let's say a person in their group. So cyberbullying can take place on any level. Fortunately, some social networks has been taking steps against it. For example, on Facebook and on some other sites, you can report bullying. So when a person is proved to be bullying, that person will be blocked or will be um, inactivated through the technical support team. So we have to be careful about cyberbullying because it exists. Next issue is high risks of fraud and identity theft. So being a part of social network means that you risk your identity. You have given your name, usually full name. You have mentioned the, uh, let's say, the place that you have studied. Uh, you can share the pictures of your children. You can actually show the places that you constantly visit by posts. You just share a pic and tag yourself. Okay, I'm in Tashkent city right now. And the people who have, let's say, negative intentions, they can find out that on certain days you are on certain places. Or you can find out information regarding your identity, your workplace, um, your private information. And one of the problems is sometimes people can forge a false identity on social network and pose as someone else. It happens a lot. So when you open up a profile, and if you don't see many friends and many relatable information, more likely that this profile is fake. Usually it happens with celebrities. So when you are searching for the official page of a celebrity, usually 100 other false ones pop up, right? So without ver verification of someone's identity, one could befriend a complete stranger and not even know it. So this is what happens when, uh, let's say, identity is stolen on social networks. Well, another risk is hacking. So cyber attacks or hacker attacks are very famous these days. And there is a risk that your account can be hacked. Your photos can be stolen or the post that you didn't want to share can be shared on your behalf. I remember a recent event with my friend when her account was hacked and the private photos that she didn't share with public appeared on public. And she was very much, let's say, um, taken away with it. It was, it was a very negative experience to have, especially as a female representative of this community. So social networking is a place for fraud and identity theft. How can we overcome this issue? Share less, try to share less. You don't have to mention every place you visit. You don't have to mention uh, every detail, every aspect of your private life. You don't have to share your photos. Even if you share it with your friends, through some of them, your photos can leak onto the public access and then may bring the outcomes that you didn't really intend to. So more you share, the higher is the risk of fraud and your identity being stolen. If you observe that someone else is using your name and your pictures and creating up an account to do things on your behalf, you can report this most of the short social networking websites have technical support team that deals with identity theft and fraud. 
So be careful time by time, um, search yourself on Google, see on what social platforms you appear, if it's real ones, really um, established by you or fake ones, because it really happens. Lack of privacy. So one of the biggest issues with social networking is lack of privacy. Privacy is the greatest gift. Well, safety is at stake when you share everything online. With so much sharing going on, your privacy will always be a big concern. For example, if you share personal information, just like we talked, the places you visit, geographical location, checking in with exact locations from your phones, tagging locations where you work, where you live, where you relax, you can impose real life threats to yourself. So uh, there is a statistical evidence of kidnappers following the parents' websites to see what places they visit with their kids. That's just one side of the issue. So other says predators, let's say people with bad intentions can obtain this information and can try to find you, can try to locate you. And also you put yourself in danger when you share too much personal information because it can come back to you in a, any other form. And after some time, it can bring negative consequences that you didn't really want it to do. So always make sure that you never share more than enough. Of course, sharing is caring. You really want to share with your friends what's, what's going on in your life. You want to share about your preferences. You want to share about your ideas, your political views, but always scrutinize the post that you are going to share. Always let it go through a filter. Ask yourself a question of, am I risking anything? Am I risking a leaking of information? Am I risking fraud? Am I risking that through this post, I can be, let's say, um, accessed by people with bad intentions? So before sharing anything, you have to carefully consider those aspects of social networking. Well, another um, side of social networking drawbacks is they can bring um, daily problems. So let's take a look at them. For example, in your age, most of you are students and loss of motivation is very common among the active users of social networking. Well, your level of motivation reduced due to the factor of social networking sites. It's easier, you keep browsing and you don't, you don't really want to receive knowledge from real world. After some time, virtual world starts feeling more real to you because you get used to it. Also students who have started relying more on information access through social networks, well, they actually reduce their learning capabilities. They try to use shortcuts they easily locate and find information, which is good, but still, this reduces their motivation. They feel less motivated to study. Another big issue with social networking on a personal level is addiction. So social media is more addictive than cigarettes and alcohol, and this is statistics. It can disturb your personal lives. And uh, people, of young age are more affected by this addiction. And the time that you can spend productively on positive outcomes is lost on browsing your home screen on social media networks. And sometimes it reduces your connectivity with other people around because you are sitting too much on social networks. How to find out if you're addicted? Just take a look at your daily routine. Does social media interfere with your other activities? Have you postponed anything you planned because you basically spent your time on social media? Then you will have to carefully consider your addiction. Isolation. 
Well, having said that, online networking is a good place for communication and connection and connectivity. So it can cause isolation. So people who are very active and usually spend tons of hours on social media lack skills in real life communication. And mostly they lack human interaction and real social life. The more time a person spends on social media alone, the greater they feel lonely. Because when you turn off your gadget, you feel that you are lonely. All those experiences, all those, um, let's say, rush of emotions that happened, that was not real, that was virtual. So it can result in stress and isolation. So if you're constantly feeling alone and isolated, then carefully examine how many hours you are spending on social networking. Maybe it's better to spend at least half of it with real friends. Then you will feel fulfilled and you will feel not alone. FOMO, fear of missing out is another personal problem. Well, in social media, you encounter images, videos showing people are having fun. They are traveling to somewhere. They are in Europe. They are enjoying their time on the beach and you feel like your life sucks. Saying it like this, your life is a failure. That's how you feel. And it causes anxiety and you feel like you are missing out on experiences and you feel that you are less than more people which can kill your confidence, which can result in bad mood and lack of, um, let's say, lack of self-esteem. So without realizing, we can reduce our self-confidence through browsing too many videos and images on social media. And of course, negative body image or body shaming. On the internet, you usually get to see beautiful people, especially on Instagram, which is a very popular platform for Uzbek young people. Well, expensive clothing, luxury lifestyle, and everything beautiful is posted. Seeing those pictures on a daily basis changes your preferences. So when you want a partner, you start searching for perfectly toned and shaped Instagram models. Well, when you look in the mirror, you can criticize yourself heavily as you are affected by those uh, Photoshop images. They set their standards for you and now you feel negative about yourself and about other real people because of what virtual world is, let's say, standardizing for you. And sometimes it can have really bad consequences. Some people even can commit a suicide based on um, their negative implications of their bodies. So that's also not a light issue. You have to consider carefully before staring at those pictures and being addicted to them. You are more real than Instagram posts. People around you are more real than pictures and videos that are shared on social media. You should always keep it in mind. Of course, depression and anxiety. Spending too much time on social media affects your mood. Well, if it causes you time, and the time can be spent on exercise, which brings positive hormones on you. Well, you should limit the amount of time you spend on social media. Otherwise, you will have less time for physical exercise, fun things, going out, taking fresh air, which helps you overcome depression. The more you spend on social media, the more depressed you feel. So half an hour is an ideal time that can be spent daily on social media. It's not like 30 minutes in one sitting. No, you can have three minutes look in the morning, then another 10 minutes in your free time. So it should not exceed half an hour. For one day, at least for one day, try to 
measure how many minutes you are spending on social media. If it's more than half an hour active time on social media, then you are probably losing on real life. And you have to take measures against it. Otherwise, you will be experiencing the negative consequences that social media brings. So now summarizing all the points made here, social media is useful. And at the same time, it can be debilitating. So what you have to do is you have to control social media before it controls you. Well, did we mention all the drawbacks or do you guys have any other suggestions about the disadvantages of social media? Pretty much everything. If something pops up, then you can share it uh, on our chat box. Now, as usual, we turn to English corner and you will have a short video on the improvement of your English language skills in the area of media literacy. So today's topic is pros and cons of social media. You will be introduced to the term bias and you will learn many terms related to media literacy in this point. So if you are ready, let's start. You can take notes if you need some notes. Hello. In this video, we're going to talk talk about how social media can help us overcome bias in traditional media. First, we'll discuss bias in traditional media. Then, we'll talk about how social media can help us recognize and deal with that bias by allowing different points of view and public discussion. Let's start with the idea of bias. Imagine you see a news story about a person that only shows negative information about that person and omits any positive information. This would be an unfair news story, of course. This is an example of bias. Bias means showing an opinion about something that is not based on all of the facts. Let's look at a bigger example. News company A usually agrees with one political party. They publish news stories that say this political party is smart and popular and is likely to win an election. News company B, on the other hand, usually agrees with a different political party. They publish stories that are very different from news company A's. They say that a different political party is smart and popular and will probably win the election. Which news company creates true media messages and which creates biased messages? That's a hard question to answer. To start trying to figure this out, we should use our media literacy skills. In particular, we should practice the analysis skills that we learned about earlier in the course to ask questions about who made a certain message and which points of view might be included or omitted from that message. Remember, a point of view is the way a person sees the world based on that person's beliefs and life experiences. Asking these questions can help us understand why there might be bias in traditional media messages. As we know, traditional media is usually produced by powerful companies or governments because they have the required money and other resources and companies and governments have a strong motivation to support certain points of view. A government-run news station, for instance, probably wants to support the point of view that the government is strong and fair and successful. They would like to publish news stories that agree with this idea. On the other hand, if there's a news story that would hurt the government, they might not want to publish the whole story there is likely to be bias in the news they publish. Here's where social media comes in. One way social media can help overcome bias is by making it easy to share different points of view. In contrast to traditional media messages, which must be produced by big companies or the government, 
social media messages are very easy for individuals to produce. If just one person writes a message or takes a picture, it can be instantly published online. Through social media, it's possible for the public to learn about events from a point of view that's different, or even completely missing, from traditional media. If you see that there are many points of view about an issue, you might take advantage of another feature of social media that can help overcome bias, the ability to ask questions and have a public discussion. Public discussion about issues is important because it can help you discover bias and find your own point of view about how to act in the world. To return to our example about news company A and news company B, you could find out more information about the political parties they support by turning to social media. Eventually, you could form a better opinion about the situation. Individual points of view on social media could be biased also, of course. However, because you can see many different points of view at the same time, you can more easily check for bias there. We'll talk more about checking for bias in social media later in this. Okay, so that's it with our English Improvement Corner. I hope that you found out useful information regarding bias and how social media can promote or help to overcome bias. So as you can see from the discussions, from the different points of views, it all depends on the user and it all depends on the consumer, what to use and what to consume. So social media is important. Um, I mean, it's impossible to avoid. So in order to use it, in order to successfully navigate through social media, we have to be equipped with critical worldview. We have to be equipped with uh, information regarding certain traps that can occur on the way of social media. So this is the basic uh, information I wanted to share with you today. Do you guys have any questions or any suggestions, any points that you would like to clarify? I have a question. Yes. Sure. Uh, can we say the bias, um, bias, a bias is a negative point, negative comment, right? Well, bias is more or less like hiding a piece of information. So when you present information and it's based on only one view, so you know that there are both sides of this thing and you present only the side that is more beneficial to you, that's called bias. So bias is when the information you share or you receive lacks in truthfulness. So it does not involve all the sides that need to be presented when touching this issue. So bias happens when you use information for your own benefit without mentioning the drawbacks. So in our presentation, we tried to overcome bias by mentioning social me media as it is. We first presented the advantages. Sure, it has many advantages. And of course, we presented these advantages and then left the conclusion to you. So in this way, you can receive bias-free information. But now, if I have presented only about the pros of social media, if I said, yeah, there are some drawbacks, but still social media is great. You can do this, you can do that. Then probably the information would be biased because you are receiving, uh, let's say, you're receiving only one side of the story. So could I answer to your question or um, you have more points to clarify? No, thank you. Okay, thank you. For the thank information. you. Thank you. Thank you for participating in today's session. So uh, your home assignment is going to be writing reflections as usual. So write on your experience of social media. So what advantages do you use? And what disadvantages have you, let's say, have you come across? Maybe you have come across some uh, risky behaviors on social media. 
just reflect on your own experience of social media and your learnings from today's session and create a reflection. Well, you will keep it. At the end, we will be creating a digital portfolio as I have been repeating throughout the beginning of this workshop, right? So for now, that's it. I'll see you guys next week. Have a wonderful week ahead. Well, if you have any questions or any other, um, let's say quick issues, you can contact me through email or on uh, our media literacy group on Telegram as well. So I'll see you next time. Have fun. Thank you. Care see you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye.